All right, welcome back. We are going to start working uh, on our hatch project, or rather continuing on the hatch project we did. Um, I do want to apologize for this starting a little bit late. I was having some audio issues, uh, still may, so I'm going to try to be monitoring that as I go through. But uh, today we are going to continue with what we did last week. So just as a refresher, um, I'm going to jump into that project now. If you're not already here, uh, log in and make sure you click on apps at the top then hatch, then you'll be brought to your My Projects page, and you should see what we worked on last week. I think I had mine listed as walking animation. If you didn't change your title, you might see uh, that. Otherwise, I renamed mine to Enemy Collisions because that's what we did last week, and let's jump into it and see what we have. All right, so I'm gonna click the green flag. Let's see what happens. All right, so Sonic's walking around. Nice walking animation, and there is a health variable right up here. And if I collide with the Oyo bot, I have a health uh, value of two instead of three. If I separate and hit them again, one, separate, hit them again, zero, and then we have a lose message. So this is kind of the foundation for a game that we've started, and let's continue with that. So I'm going to click on Edit Code Block, and we'll get started. So as always, I'm going to click Expand Editor. And I'm going to make the stage a little bit bigger. All right, so I thought of a variety of different things we can do. Um, I was going to go with the platformer, and I still think I will, but I'm going to take a detour this week. Uh, and we're going to just kind of make a maze game, which you may have made before, but we are going to start introducing um, some complexity to it. And part of the reason for that is uh, I do want to do the platformer, but I think I have some features that I want to add, maybe add some files that you guys can download to make a really nice looking game. Um, so that maybe we'll do next week, but right now we're going to make a type of maze type game, but we're going to have uh, enemies that we have to avoid. So, um, any maze game, you need the actual maze, and that's where we're going to start. So in order to do so, I'm going to make that as a backdrop. So you can go ahead and click on stage in the bottom right hand corner. And this will bring us to the stage editing, and now we can just click on backdrops in the upper left hand corner. So we have a uh, plain backdrop right now. So there's a variety of different ways you can make a maze and we're going to make it as a backdrop and if we add multiple levels they'll be their own separate backdrops um, but the way there's a variety of different ways you can do it um, you can just start adding blocks like this that you need to avoid and you just kind of navigate around the white space uh, that can work and you can do that if you choose to do so I'm gonna do it a little differently I'm going to kind of carve a path out of one bigger block so I'm just gonna do control Z if you're on a Mac command Z uh, to get rid of that and then um, let's go ahead and start making that maze. So I'm going to use a rectangle tool, but I want to get rid of this outline. So to do so, I click on the outline drop down, click this white square with a line through it, say no outline, and purple's overdone. Uh, so I'm just going to go with this kind of yellowish color, um, bump up the saturation, keep the brightness high, maybe more yellow. That's a little not great looking there we go all right so i'm going to draw a big rectangle right around the entire screen i want it to take up the whole screen and once i'm done with that uh, now i'm going to start carving the paths but i'm going to do so in a particular way so i'm going to click the arrow here click back to the rectangle tool and um, now i need to change the fill color you can drop the saturation to draw white paths um, some other options are to just drop the saturation a bit so that you have kind of like a monotone or like mono color, monotone, different shades. Um, or you can do like opposing colors. So uh, like red and green, something like that. I'm going to stick with the mono color and I'm going to draw just some arbitrary paths, but I'm only going to draw a block once. So I'm going to draw, I'm kind of getting an eye of how big Sonic is, uh, roughly this big. 
just like that. So that's going to be where my path starts. Sonic will start maybe somewhere over here, right? Oh, got to go back to the backdrop. Um, now, you can always draw paths with different widths to them, different, um, yeah, different widths. But if you want to keep it consistent, you can use the select tool, click on the path you just made, and then copy it and paste it again. So now you have a rectangle with the same width, and you can just start rotating this. You may have seen this in other sessions as well. So we can start moving like that. And I can copy and paste this again. And you'll, I'm going to change this, and you'll see um, why I'm kind of placing it like this. Uh, by the way, to get it to lock in the vertical, I'm holding shift. That'll lock it to 45 degree increments. And this one's going to go just like this. Now, this seems like I'm going to go I'm going to go up and around, but instead what I'm going to do is shorten this so it's not touching. And now I'm going to draw a big rectangle here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, use my dupe, uh, copy and paste method to make a short path between the two. So the reason I'm doing this like this is because now I'm going to take the Oyobot sprite, which is supposed to be the enemy, and I'm going to have it move back and forth like this at times blocking the entrance, at times leaving it open. So you create a kind of obstacle. And this is just one way to get started. Um, if you want to put more complexity to your levels, you can always make things smaller so that you have more space to move around, making the sprites and the pathways smaller. But for now, I'm just going to put Oyobot here. And um, this is going to be my path for now. Uh, actually, before we do that, Let's go ahead and define the end of our path, which is just going to be right up here. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, the circle tool, and this has to be a different color from uh, the two you've just used. Um, in this case, I'm going to go kind of opposing colors. I think it's blue. Could be purple. Um, I don't quite remember, but we'll go with blue for now. And if you want to get uh, a perfectly symmetrical circle, once again, hold shift. All right, so now that we have that, um, let's go ahead and run the code, see what Oyobot's doing. Okay, so Oyobot is moving back and forth, kind of like we'd, we would like, however, um, not in the right position. So I'm going to stop this. Actually, I'm going to run it one more time. So he first starts moving to the left. Okay, so I'm going to stop this. I'm going to put Oyobot right in the pathway. I'm going to note this X and Y position. So that's 106 and negative 94 for me. And so up here in the code, I'm going to change X to 106 and Y to negative 94. All right, so let's zoom out of that a little bit. There we go. All right, pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna move his starting position back. So negative 94, I'm gonna make this negative 60. Wrong number. Not negative 94, I need to change the X value, so I'll make that like 80. And let's see, just by trial and error. All right. Pretty good. I think that's a little bit too narrow a gap to get through. I'm going to push this all the way back to zero. And I'm just going to increase um, the distance that Oyobot moves. So I'm going to do so by changing the values in the change x by a block. These need to be the same in magnitude, one being positive, the other being negative. So if I start my code again, 
that works pretty good. And I'm going to move them back even more, like negative 25. There we go. All right, so we're pretty far along. Um, I'm going to click the green flag. And let's see. I can be Sonic, and I can start walking around. Looks decently good. Um, I lose health, but I just need to walk past them once. So that we're going to need to add some stuff to that. And uh, at the moment, I can just walk through walls. That doesn't work, and nothing happens when I get to the end. So we're going to program that. So I'm going to go to Sonic, and we're going to program a couple of things. One, the wall collisions. Two, uh, the finishing point collisions, the end of the maze collision. And three, we are going to update the uh, collision with the enemy sprite, or your bot in this case, uh, with a little more code. So wall collisions first. So let's go ahead and set Sonic to the beginning of this maze right here. And my X and Y coordinate are negative 167 and by... Uh, negative 134. You can see I already have that in my go to block. So I'm just going to slide that above this forever block. So every time I start my code, Sonic goes right to the beginning. Perfect. So now that he's there, I can uh, start adding some more code to get uh, the wall collisions. So I'm going to do this as a separate group of code, thread of code, block of code, however you prefer to call it. So I'm going to go to the events category, grab a when green flag clicked block. Go to control, grab a forever block. And right underneath forever, I'm going to grab an if block. All right. So with this here we can now sense for the wall collision so sensing and i'm going to grab this touching color block now you'll notice that uh purple not the same color as this kind of yellow color over here yellow green um so i'm going to click on the color and you'll find the eyedropper tool so if i click the eyedropper tool i can then select the color of the walls and um, now we can do something if Sonic touches the wall. And what do we want to do? We're going to send him back to the beginning. Uh, if this maze just lets you collide with the wall and do nothing and, and doesn't penalize you for it, it's too easy. If it just keeps you in bounds, also a little too easy. We're going to send you back to the beginning. So we can grab another go to block. And I'm making sure that my X and Y position are where I want to start, which it is. It, they are, so that's perfect. And let's test this out. I'm walking, and when I collide with the wall, it goes right back to the beginning. Perfect. So now I want to do put, uh, write my code so that when Sonic reaches the end, something happens. So uh, in the future, we might make this um, we might make this multi levels. I don't think we're going to have time for that today. So instead, we will um, just say that you won the level just kind of like before. So let's bring Sonic back here. And this code isn't going to be too hard to write. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this code right here. So you can right click on this uh, two finger click on a trackpad to right click duplicate. And you should get that whole if statement. And um, we just need to modify a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of the go to XY block. And I'm going to click on the color in here, use that eyedropper tool again, and select the color of the end. So now I have touch and color blue. What do we want to do? Um, we want to say that uh, you won and then stop everything. Fortunately, we already kind of have that code right up here. Say something and then stop all. So I'm going to right click on that, duplicate, and slide that. Where to go? Slide that not there. Slide that right inside that if statement. Go 
Only instead of saying, oh no, I ran out of health, we want to say you win. I'll make that for one second. So I'll click the green flag. Wall collisions work. Perfect. And let's test collision with the end. You win. Game stops. Can't move around as I touch the keyboard. Seems to be working pretty well. Now, let's add a layer of complexity with this enemy sprite. So, right now, if we collide with the enemy sprite, we get our health subtracted. But we need to do a little bit more than that. When you collide with that sprite, now we want to make it so that you get sent back to the beginning in that case as well. So what we're going to do is, um, instead of a go to block, we're going to make this a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to grab a glide uh, one seconds to X, Y block, but I'm going to restart my maze, end it, just so that I have the correct X and Y position here. So now that I have that, I'm going to drag that glide block, and I'm going to put it right above this say block. And instead of, oh, actually, I take that back. Um, that glide block can't go inside there. Let me take that out. Put it in the wrong place. This glide block shouldn't happen when you run out of health. It should happen every time you touch the sprite. So I'm going to put this um, right underneath this if statement. And this wait until block doesn't actually uh, really matter at this point, so we can take that out. So now if we test this, I can lock up, over, go down, and I get sent back to the beginning. So I also want to say like whoops or something like that. Um, so I'm going to do that right here. Grab a say block from the looks category. Let's test this out. Hmm. Let's try that again. I saw it kind of move twice. Oh, okay. So what's happening here is um, as the sprite glides back to the starting position, it touches the color yellow and this code is running. So we can fix that by taking all of the if blocks inside this and just sliding it right underneath the first if block. So now that should fix the problem. Yep, there we go. So now I can go around, I can try to get through, maybe I'm not good at this game. Hit the enemy sprite. And then if I lose all of my health, the game ends. So this is just a the first thing you can implement with this kind of uh, maze type game. You can always add scrollable levels, multi-levels. Um, this is just a simple way that you could add enemies to a game uh, in order to increase the complexity. If you want to further increase the complexity, you could start firing missiles or some other kind of projectile from the enemy sprite so that your player has to dodge that as well. Uh, there is a whole variety of things you can do. So next time, I think I'm going to go the platformer route, and we're going to start uh, making a pretty cool game. That might be a longer lesson, but I wanted to make sure that I had some of the uh, cool game assets in there for you. But that was all I have for today. Stick around. We have a mentor session coming up, uh, and then that's going to be followed by the 3D printing tech talk, student mentor showcase, and of course, the game jam.